G'day, this is Andrew Price here from BlenderGuru.com and welcome to part two of the Space Corridor tutorial. So in the first part, we finished modeling the entire corridor. It was a big tutorial. Um, so now you should have what looks um, exactly like this, a completely modeled scene. And uh, in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is adding in all the materials. We're going to be doing the lighting, um, texturing, and a little bit of compositing at the end. And uh, hopefully we're going to end up with an image that looks at least somewhat uh, like this one right here. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get cracking. So uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is uh, unwrapping uh, this main structure. So this structure that's already selected right here. So this is quite a uh, quite an elaborate looking structure. It's um, It's got a whole bunch of different parts to it. And uh, if we were to unwrap it as it is at the moment, um, then it would look a little bit messy because you've got things like this little you know, grate along the bottom there, and you've got these pipes here as well. So what we need to do is to separate some of the objects and uh, make them, you know, a, yeah, a separate object, um, just so that we've got this leftover structure there uh, remain. So what I'm going to do is uh, just select this uh, to start with, this pipe right here. So I'm going to select it, then hit Control L like that, then hit P, and then hit selection. So now that there is now a separate object. So I'm going to do that for anything that could cause a problem uh, with the UV unwrapping. So this pipe right here as well, do the same thing. Got another one here. I've got a few there actually. Actually these pipes that are going to be here, um, they're not going to have a texture on them. They're going to be like a solid, um, yeah, like a solid plastic material or whatever. So those ones are fine, but these ones, um, the ones that I'm making a separate object, oops. Uh, these are going to have a um, yeah, kind of like a rust texture on them, so they're a little bit more important. So I'm having to uh, move them out of the way. Uh, and then you've got this grid floor along the bottom here, uh, which wouldn't be too hard to UV unwrap, except that you've got the pieces that are on the outside. Um, so you've got you know those pieces there. So that can be a little bit yeah, a bit complicated. So to avoid all that, I'm just going to move it to a separate object, and I'll just check anything else that could be causing a problem. I think. I would say these right here, um, are, these are something I didn't actually include in the last tutorial. I mean, they're pretty basic. It's just like a little siren looking to, I'm not a siren. It's like, you know, like a police light, like a warning light. Uh, looks like that. Um, yeah, they're pretty basic to model, so I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, but yeah, if I was to make that a separate object, then it would kind of ruin the array system because you can see how small that object there is. If I just show you um, what I'm talking about, if I just hit P, like that. Uh, you can see how the array is just like all snapped together. So if we were to fix that, we'd have to go through that and change all the settings, um, you know, with the array, which would just be a hassle. So we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to leave it um, as the, uh, yeah, as the actual object of the structure. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think, uh, I think we can get cracking now. So the first thing um, I'm focusing on is this uh, pillar, so uh, the door structure, whatever that, yeah, I can never find the right word for that, but anyway, you know, this whole part right here. So um, we're going to have to break it up um, so that it is UV unwrapping correctly. So what we're going to do is put in some seams so that, um, yeah, so that UV unwraps. So the way I, I try to think of things that kind of helps me when I'm UV unwrapping something is if I imagine that this entire structure here was made out of paper, uh, if I wanted to disassemble it without ripping the paper, where would I have to use the scissors to actually cut it? So that usually helps me to come up with, you know, where I actually need to put the cuts in. So if this was a physical object, first big cut would have to be that one uh, right there. Uh, and I would just cut it clean off because it needs to be a separate object. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so um, then I can see um, around about uh, that, these little corners and stuff like that. I tried different methods when I was like testing for this tutorial, like I created little seams on each of these little edges and it was a bit of a mess and uh, it didn't really provide, like it actually kind of worked negatively because the objects were kind of separate and it wasn't working with the texture as well as it should have. Anyway, so, uh, so I'm not going to worry about that, um, but I will worry about these corners that are right there. So that one, I'm going to make a seam right there, another one right here. So essentially wherever there's like one of these little lights that I've uh, that I've put in there, so that'll come in handy if we've uh, if we've got a cut that's going there, and then you want to create a cut uh, just along. Whoops, not that one. Yeah, just along that point right there. If I just I might turn that. Whoops. 
And it's hard to select things. There we go. So I'm going to make that a, uh, a separate seam as well. And that's going to help break that up. And then I'll do the same with this one. You know what? I'll just select faces instead. Mark seam. There we go. All right. I'll do the same for this one here. And then we'll go into vertice mode. And I'll create more seams. So um, if you've never... I just created an edge loop there, didn't I? Yeah. If you've uh, if you've never UV unwrapped something before, this type of model is going to be something a little bit daunting for you to take on as sort of a, a first time. Um, but you know, if you're just following what I'm doing here, I'm sure you won't go too far astray. But uh, yeah, UV unwrapping. I wouldn't say it's an art. I'd say it's uh, well, it's an art of patience. That is probably the uh, the clearest way to put it. Really, you just have to be very very patient. Okay, so if I just hit L and select, okay, that's pretty good. Um, I noticed actually, if you hit L, like uh, even though this is one object, like if I hit Control L, you'll see that it selects everything, and it should actually be selecting that part there as well. But anyway, I've noticed now wherever you put a seam, if you hit L, um, it's actually just going to select whatever is part, uh, you know, um, within the seam. So it's not actually going to select the whole object anymore. I'm not sure if that's a new feature or if I just never noticed it, but it, it helps you to see um, what parts are in, you know, like for figuring out if you've missed a spot, you know, with UV unwrapping and stuff like that. So it can really help. So uh, that's something to keep a note of. Uh, these parts here with this, uh, these little tubes, they'll be annoying uh, UV unwrapping them and they're, they're just going to be solid plastic objects as well. So they don't need a texture. So we won't need to worry about them either. Uh, but now moving on to the roof here. So that's not the roof. This one is the roof. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going to create a cut along here. Let's create one at the top. Mark seam. And then another one right here. So I'll mark those both as seams. And then another one actually down here as well. I'm going to actually, because that's getting annoying, I'm going to hide that tube. Oh, there we go. I can get to it better. Okay, so I'm just just imagining, you know, if that was paper, where would I need to cut it? And I reckon that's about right. Um, yeah, it's about right, I think. Okay, and I'll just hit Control L, see what that object is. That's fine. All right, now down here on the floor, that, not that one, this one, on the floor. Um, I don't think that needs to be cut. That'll be fine as it is because we want the texture to kind of run along you know the the pattern of the floor anyway so I think that's all uh, I think it's all pretty good to go right now so what we can do now I'm gonna split the window in half and I'm gonna bring up a UV image editor over here and get rid of that rendered texture there and I'm gonna hit U and then select unwrap okay so you probably got uh, what looks like this right now which is this uh, doesn't look like a very successful unwrap at all I mean you've got the main objects here um, you can see it they're not taking up you know, the whole size of this, uh, you know, everything as it should, basically. So what I want to do is I'll just turn on, uh, what is that called? What do you call it? Sync selection. Okay, so now if I select some of these vertices here, I can see which parts aren't UV unwrapping properly. So in this case, I forgot to actually move this to a separate object. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Get rid of that. And we've got some of this weird stuff happening down here. Select you and you. Let's find out where you are. Okay, these guys right here. You know what? Just to make it easier. Uh, actually, no. I'm just going to make them a separate object. Yeah. All right. You've been banished. No more. And you, I'm going to make this little guy because he's like part of the pipe. He's like an extra little piece. I'm going to make him part of this guy as well. All right. Let's try that again. So now that we've kind of fixed up a few uh, little errors, now if we UV unwrap it, it should look a lot better. There we go. Okay, looks a lot nicer. You've got a whole bunch of you know stuff over there, which is probably, you can see you've got that siren right there, all that you know police light, warning light, whatever, and a bunch of other stuff. But that uh, they aren't going to be textured, so they're fine. Um, the main ones are covered. So in order to check to see if uh, if our you know UV texturing is pretty good, what I'm going to do is to go ahead and load in a UV test grid. So the point of this is to purely check to see if um, you know if you haven't got any warped areas or stuff that looks a little bit off in your model. So this will be able to um, yeah tell you that. So um, if I go now to the textured shader, you can see that uh, nothing has changed. Uh, if I just go to this 
Yeah, let's have a look at it just on its own. Um, yeah, you'll notice that we can't see any texture. Even though we are in textured mode, um, it's not displaying. Now, the reason for that is that we are using the Cycles rendering engine. And I don't know if they're going to change it in the future. I'm kind of hoping that they do. But, you know, normally in the normal blending render engine, once you've UV unwrapped something over here and you've got it in the image editor, when you go into texture viewport mode, it would already be there. But in Cycles, it's not. Uh, in order to get that to display, you actually have to add a material and then go ahead, add an image texture, and then load in... Um, that image that you want to display. And now we can see over here that UV test grid is now showing. So let's take a look at it and see if we've got any areas that are stretched or warped or could be improved. Um, now this door here is all kind of wonky and a little bit messy, um, but it's not too bad. I mean, we could go through the pains of trying to make it straight. And to do that, you'd probably have to do the, uh, you know, project from view like that project from view but then you'd have other problems with kind of areas like at the front there and it gets a little bit messy um, so to be honest even though it's not perfect along the front there it's good enough for the image um, that we're making we're not you know zooming in on it getting any of the detail and stuff so a little bit of minor stretching is okay because so, remember we are trying to go for speed here um, we're trying to be efficient 3d artists we're not trying to be always perfect because then yeah, you're not always uh, uh, employable in the industry basically um, so so anyway, so that is fine. Um, these walls here are absolutely perfect. Um, the ceiling, though, you'll notice that the ceiling is kind of like on a uh, tilted angle. So in order to fix that, you can see here, if I just select um, Control L, you can see that it's this piece right here, which is on a tilted angle. So if I now rotate that, and I'm holding down control as I do that, you can see that it was actually on a minus 55 degree angle and it was tilted. But now that I've fixed that, um, it has subsequently corrected itself. So now you've got that ceiling um, correctly UV unwrapped. You've got the floor that's looking perfect, the walls, the floor, um, this structure here that's looking okay. And uh, so in that case, I say it is pretty good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and load in our first texture. So this is a texture that comes from cgtextures.com and it is called da, 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 Metal Base 122. Um, so this is one that I'm going to be using a lot throughout the tutorial. It's sort of like the main texture that we're going to be using for you know, almost everything um, because it's pretty good. It's, um, I tested a whole bunch of them and uh, it was not bad. So that's what we're going to be uh, using for the majority of it. Um, so if we wanted to, if we wanted to make like that wall there, um, this part here, I'll uh, just turn off sync mode now actually. Um, if you wanted that to use more texture, then you can kind of expand that. Or even better, if you wanted to tilt it. Uh, actually, no, that would kind of ruin it because you want the streaks to actually be going down it, looking like kind of like rust and metal or whatever. It's kind of like dribbled down the sides of the structure over the years and it's kind of made it all weird and messy. Um, so yeah, so you kind of want a bit of that, and then if you want, you can scale up the uh, the ceiling and the floor as well, and that'll just use a little bit more of the texture than normal, and then we'll do the same with our wall here, just scaling that up, and uh, everything else is uh, is pretty good to go. Okay, so the main structure is done. So that is the hard part. Um, the rest of it. Um, there's not really anything else that needs to be textured except for these pipes right here. Uh, and they're going to have the same texture and they're fairly easy to do. So let's just go ahead and do them right now. Um, so in order to UV unwrap this pipe, um, all I'm going to do... Actually, first of all, I might just yeah, delete that. So Cycles has got some weird thing going on where it, like if you've got something in the UV image editor and then you make an adjustment or you edit your object and then it takes on that image, it'll put it in the materials and it's really, really frustrating and I, I hate it. So I'm always kind of like nervous whenever I go into edit mode and I'm, there's something in the image editor. So anyway, sorry about that. Let's go, let's continue. Um, with that, um, so essentially I'll just, I'll load in the image that we're gonna be uh, UV unwrapping it to. So let's just, let's just put it in here so that we can get it ready. Load it up. Okay, so the texture that we're going to be using is this one right here, Rust Leak 38, and it's again from CG Textures. Um, and what I'm going to do, actually I'll load it in here, that's what I wanted to do, Rust Leak. Okay, there we go. So, so this image, this texture is showing us half of a pipe, basically. So uh, in order to correctly UV unwrap this, what we need to do is to uh, essentially create two seams. So one along the top there, mark seam, and then the one on the other side, just like that. So we've got that. 
And then if we UV unwrap that, we should have two separate objects. So we've got this piece, which is the top piece, or you know, one side, and then this is the other side. Um, so and all we need to do now is to essentially size these up like so. And I'm actually going to keep them in that order. So this one is kind of off out in there, and then this one is actually over the texture. Because um, if you're familiar with texturing, if something is outside of the box, then it actually tiles the texture. So you can essentially imagine that image there is tiled infinitely across here. So having it just above the box there is perfectly fine. There's going to be no problem with that. Um, anyway, so um, if I just went now into textured mode, let's just take a look at it. Then you can see that we've got this right here. So one side, this side over here, is actually pretty, it's textured not bad. Um, but on the other side, you've got it. Um, the other, essentially what, what's happened is one of these pieces is actually uh, 180 degrees around the wrong way. So in order to find out which piece it is, I'm just going to select there, and you can see that it's this one right here. So I'm going to turn off sync mode, because you can't uh, link select in sync mode for some reason. And there we go. Ta -da. So you now essentially have, very quickly, um, a rusty looking pipe. And you can see that it's kind of stretched a little bit, like lengthways. So in order to fix that, you can scale along the x-axis there, and then that's going to fix up that texture. And you'll also notice around the bottom, you've kind of got some, like, it's kind of twisted, like skewed a little bit to the side. So if you wanted to fix that, what you can do is select these right here. So I'm holding down Alt, then I'm right clicking, then hitting S, X, and 0. Alt, right click, S, X, 0. And I'm just doing that repeatedly. And what that should do is just make it so that the texture looks just a little bit better. And you can fix that, um, or at least, you know, I guess if you're in a hurry, I guess you can when you unwrap the texture, instead of just hitting U and then selecting Unwrap, you can select Cylinder Unwrap from the top view, and uh, it would give you a kind of similar result, but then it kind of messes up the end pieces as well, so it's kind of annoying, but anyway, that's kind of a quick fix there. And if you want to go a step further, you could also you know, do that for all the horizontal pieces, but they're pretty okay. Um, but now what we have is something that looks a little bit better. Um, for these pieces right here, you want to try and get um, those pieces. You want to try and get them so that they are, um, uh, how should I say it, the correct um, ratio, I should say, I, I don't know what the, how to describe it, but you know what I mean, like having it that far apart doesn't fit the, uh, fit the scale of the model, so I'm just going to be scaling them down just so that it's a little bit more realistic to the size of those little pieces there, and you can see that it looks a little bit nicer now as well. So there you go. That is now completely UV unwrapped, and it's ready to go. Um, so I'm now just going to do quickly the same for this one. This one's a little bit easier, because we don't need to do that whole vertical fix thing. Uh, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but don't have to. So marking as a seam, then hit unwrap, and I'm just going to scale that up until one f piece fits perfectly. Uh, round about that anyway. A little bit more. And this one's a little bit different because it's kind of a little bit wonky. It's not all exactly on a horizontal line, but it's not going to be, you know, a centerpiece of the image, so it's not that much of a problem. I'm going to make that the same material as that one. There we go. And we have the exact same problem as the last one. I'm going to guess it's that one. There we go. No, it's the wrong one. Okay, this one. This piece. There we go. Perfect. Uh, actually, no, it's not really perfect, is it? There we go. Now it's... Oh, there's a little piece there. Maybe this one. Okay, there we go. That is, uh, that is close enough. Okay, so now we've got this kind of grungy metal... Yeah, looking hallway. It doesn't really look that good at all. Because, of course, we are in just textured viewport mode. Um, so now that we've done uh, the texturing for it... Um, oh, actually, no. Sorry, there is one more thing. We have these systems right here. Okay, so we've now done yeah the corridor. Now we have to do these ones. So these... Um, 
these objects here, they look like they would be a nightmare to uh, to UV unwrap. And uh, well, they would if you were to do it properly. Uh, but we're not going to do it properly. We're going to take some shortcuts. And uh, by doing that, all we're going to be doing is um, I'm just going to go up here. It's got the get the image texture metal base like so. I think I think it is actually just assigned. Oh no, it is the right texture. Okay, metal base over here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go U, then select Project from View. Like so, and then if we scale that up, ooh, you can see it's kind of a little bit too big. Um, but if we go into Textured Mode, what we should see is that texture applied perfectly. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to save time as well, you can go um, just select U, or U. Um, and then select project from view bounds and that will make it actually fit the size of the texture that will just save you a little bit of time now you'll notice that the sides have this problem this kind of stretching problem and that is of course because we're projecting from the view so actually uh, that point right there and that point right there they're not getting any texture um, any extra texture between those two so in order to easily fix that problem is if I just select uh, if I go into synchronize view like that and I'm selecting that whole edge there by holding down Alt. Then I just scale that up. Then you can see we now have a little bit more texture on the sides there, and that fixes the problem. And you'll notice we have the same problem on all the sides of everything on the inside there. But I didn't bother to fix that because it's not very noticeable. Um, yeah, I'm lazy. I want to save time, and uh, I'm sure you guys do as well. So I'm not going to bother trying to fix that. Um, you can if you want to. It's entirely up to you, but I'm not going to. <laughs> So uh, we now need to go ahead and do the same for all of these pieces along here. Uh, you'll notice that that texture has applied to all of these um, because they are sharing the same object data. So if you click that there, you can see that they're now sharing that. Um, so yeah, you do that. If, if, that's, if you've got one that's different, just hold down Shift, then hit Control L, Control L, and then select Object Data, and then they'll sh all share the same object data. Anyway, I'm going to be doing that for all of these right now as well. So let's just move these. Um, some of those two are overlapping anyway. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide these. Okay. Okay, so because these are on an angle, you can't really do project from view from the side view because then you get warped kind of uh, view. But if you go, if you press the 8 and the 2 key, then you can move the, uh, the camera accordingly. And then you can go from that view, you project from view bounds. Synchronize, move that up, and there you go, fix that. Okay, next one. Oops. Project from view, bounds, select that, and scale it up. And one more piece over here. Yee. You project from view, and then scale that up. Okay, now let's just check. I'll go into textured view mode now. I should check it's got the right texture. Yeah, it has. Okay. Go into textured view, and it looks like they've all got it. Oh, except for those guys on that side. These guys do not want to be part of the party at all. So I will force them into it. Object data. There you go. So now they've uh, now they've been UV unwrapped just like that one. These ones here, they need a piece of the action. Object data this guy and oh that one needs okay that one needs UV unwrapping as well you project from view scale that up textured mode there we go looking good looking good making sure you always select the one that you actually want to be the master of the uh, you know that needs to be copied making sure you select it last otherwise you'll get yeah, the wrong one selected <laughs> um, okay um, this just making sure that's the right piece okay so it is that one okay and control L object data I thought we actually did this properly in the last in uh, in part one of the tutorial but obviously not I thought they were all you know already UV unwrapped and they were the, um, had the right object data already linked, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so looking at the front view, I'm going to hide that one just for the moment. So 
on this piece, uh, because they're yeah, tilted in the other direction, I'm going to hit the 2 key, and then that's going to move me around to there. I'm going to hit Project from View Bounds. And I'll select that outer edge and do the exact same thing. Okay, I'll bring back that other one. Bring back everything. Textured View. Select all of these one by one. You as well. Control L, Object Data, Textured View, and everything now. Yes, everything works. Ta da! Brilliant. So, bringing back everything we've done so far, this is now what we have. So, looks, um, yeah, well, better than a obviously plain blank view, but it uh, doesn't look very realistic. But now comes the good part because we're actually going to be fiddling with the materials now and, uh, and uh, making them look cool. Um, I guess the first thing we should do actually before we get into the materials is actually setting up the lighting properly because if you don't have any lighting then you won't be able to see that the changes um, the changes that you're actually making to the materials. So for the lighting um, with our main structure right here um, when we were building it we created these little boxes. Um, let's just let's just look at this layer by itself. I'll turn off the mirror and I'll turn off the array just so that we can zoom in here. Actually, no, I'll turn back on the array. There, turn back on. No, I'll turn back on the mirror. Yes, there we go. Okay. So we've got this little box um, right here. And these are just what I imagine would be, I don't know, like a uh, LED kind of flat looking light. And they're just going to be used to cast most of the lighting across the scene. So we're going to go ahead and add in a new material. And this one is going to be called white light. Very simple. And the texture or the material type, the shader type, is going to be an emission shader. And the strength, I'm going to set that to 8. And then go ahead and click on Assign. Now we want that also, you notice down here under these little tiny pieces, we've also got the exact same thing. So down there, and then one at the top as well. Right there. White light, go ahead and hit on Assign. I didn't give these uh, these little lights here, these little siren things. I didn't make them emit light because I thought it would look better um, and less over the top if you know not everything was lit up like a Christmas tree. So that kind of uh, I kind of thought it helped a little bit better. Um, anyway, let's just go ahead, um, making sure I'm saving as I go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on uh, rendered viewport shader mode just to check that those lights are now casting light. And by the looks of it, they absolutely are. So. It looks as though uh, it's going pretty well so far. Let's just go back into solid view mode. Okay, now other sources of lighting. I'm just trying to think right now, making sure of everything. Um, there is one more, I guess. Um, we put right at the other end of the tunnel, right above our bay door. Because if we have a look at the finished scene again, um, you'll notice that at the back, right above that door there, you've got a very bright light shining down. And that extra contrast will help draw the viewer's eye to the uh, to the end of the image, as opposed to just kind of milling around um, and uh, in the rest of the scene. So it kind of it has a path that your eyes will follow. So that's really important. And having sharp areas of contrast like that, so areas where there's um, yeah obviously lots of light contrasting with dark values, then uh, it draws your eye to it a lot more. Okay, so I've just created a circle there. I sort of sped past that. I wouldn't really show you what I was doing. But anyway, this lamp is just a circle, and it's got a flat face in the middle there, using an N-gon, like so. And I've just placed it right above there, just above any pipes. I didn't actually model any lamp. I didn't put any fancy, you know, actual physical lamp values to it. I mean, I just made it a flat circle, and I hit it a bunch of all this other stuff in the ceiling. Um, so for that one, we're going to make that a little bit brighter, and emit a value of 20. Just like so. Um, okay. Excellent. All right, so now we can go ahead and move into the shaders. The rest of the shaders. So the first shader we're going to focus on is uh, is the main one. Uh, it's going to be used yeah, pretty much for most of the materials in here, and that is, of course, that textured um, part for the corridor. So, um, actually, we you can see currently we've got uh, the material for steel here, and then the material for the corridor here, uh, which is a different material. So, in order to save time, I'm going to make them both the exact same material, because they are. And, um, and then we're going to go over to the node editor, right over here, 
and this is where we're going to start getting into some fancy materials. Um, so currently having a look at our scene, um, it's basically just using a diffuse shader at the moment. So you've got an image texture, which is that, yeah, obviously the metal texture, and it's going through a diffuse, and that's it. So there's no extra lighting, like there's no glossy shaders, there's no like reflections, there's no bump mapping, there's no nothing. So that's what we're going to do right now. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to get a reflection in that shader. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in a glossy shader. Then in order to mix the two, I need to go ahead and add a mix shader node and then connect the two just like that. So just so that I can see it um, right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and isolate it by itself. And I'm gonna move, actually let's just move this stuff here. Uh, not you. And you and, not you, and you. I'm gonna move you to a new layer just over here at the way. No, layer four, there we go. Oh, too late anyway. Um, and, uh, and I'm also just going to turn off the array. Yeah, just so that I can see things um, as it's happening. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in a plane. I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And this is just whilst we're doing the testing phase. Um, I'm going to make this an emitter. Like so. I'll just set that to 5 or something like that. And let's go ahead and now go into the rendered viewport shading mode. Like so. Okay, cool. So you can see that with our basic uh, diffuse and glossy shader, that we now have reflections um, on our on our texture there. So we can see. See, it appears as though the uh, the texture is not showing through. It's almost like it's not there. If I just turn down that, let's just see if the texture. Okay, so the texture is there. I was worried that actually uh, the texture was had disappeared, but. Uh, you can see that with the gloss turned up so much, it looks as though it's just a completely gray texture. But anyway, so I'm going to leave that down there at 0.1 for now. And if we wanted to make the reflections more sharp, then we can turn down that roughness value. So I'm going to set that up to be about a 0.1. Now, one of the things we want is some bump mapping to that texture there. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, I'm going to add in a mix node. So color, then mix, not a mix shader, a mix node. There's a difference. Uh, and I'm going to take the output of our image texture and I'm going to drop that into the bottom input of the mix node and then make sure that the uh, the blend type is set to multiply and then the top value is 100% white and then we take the output of this and then put that into the displacement right there. Now this value, uh, this fac value, this factor value, that's going to determine how much bump mapping you get. So if you set that to 1, you can see that's some pretty hideous bump mapping right there because that's 100% bump mapped. And then if you set that to be, let's say, 0 0.01, then you get something that looks a little bit nicer. So if I zoom in here, then you should be able to see the details. So normally you set this value to be something really, really low. Mm -hmm. So around about that value suits pretty well. So uh, 0 0.01, that should be pretty fine. And um, at the moment, it's looking a lot better than it was. Um, there's one extra way that you can go and um, get a little bit more, I suppose, depth to that material. And that's by making it so that the actual image texture itself affects the reflectiveness. So the way you do that is you take the output of the image texture and then you put it into the factor input of that mix shader. Now what that's going to do is it's going to be now using the image texture, that metal texture, and the dark values are going to be where there is no reflection or no glossy shader. And the white values are where there's going to be 100% um, glossy shader. Now the only problem is, is that now, because that's taken over that value that was there previously, which was uh, 0.1 previously. Um, now you can see that it's really, really super glossy. So what we need to do is actually go ahead and add in a color ramp node, like so. And with this, we can actually now, we can change that white slider, so the one that's on the far right-hand corner. That will now essentially act as the maximum amount of reflectivity. So if I turn that down, then that's obviously going to affect the amount of reflectivity that it allows through. So um, that'll give us a lot more control over that. And the other thing it allows us to do is to actually turn back and uh, make it so that some parts or a lot less parts have reflection than others. Um, so to give you a more extreme example, if you were to set these really close together, like black and white like that, then you can see that you get some really sharpish looking reflection. So that would be, I don't know if it was, I don't know, puddles or something like that if you were trying to make a rainy scene or something. But that just gives you an idea of what you can do. So I'll just set that back to something a little more grayish looking. 
the maximum amount of the, uh, the glossiness. And then I'll bring this back a little bit as well. So you've got a little bit of that texture in there. And that'll obviously bring that out a little bit more as well. I'm going to turn up the bump mapping as well, 0 0.015, just to get a little bit more detail in there. And, uh, and that texture is pretty much done now. Uh, the, uh, the shader is pretty much done now. Um, so, uh, yeah. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and move on to the next thing. So let's just get out of this mode. And, uh, oh, there's one other thing. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and model... Actually, I shouldn't have deleted that because I might need that later. I'm going to move that to layer... Yeah, that one right there. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing uh, that we should do is actually model the fluorescent lights that are going to be underneath... Um, underneath the scene, so underneath those uh, the metal grates that are under there. So I'll just turn back on the array system. There we go, so we can see that. So uh, basically, underneath there, we want there to be some fluorescent lights, um, just like that down there. Um, so in the first, you know, part one of this tutorial, we did all the modeling um, except for the actual fluorescent lights, because I figured it's lighting, so we can do that in this part. So it's really, really easy. All we need to do is go ahead and add in a cylinder. And I'm going to leave the cylinder uh, vertice amount set to 12 and make sure that there's no caps as well. And then in the mirror modifier, make sure that you uncheck clipping so that you can now scale that down. And then rotate it by 90 degrees and we can turn on clipping again now. And then basically the, uh, the size that you make that, like the radius of that cylinder there, um, will then actually act as the um, sort of how much light will actually be cast on the scene. So if you get too much light coming from the fluorescent lights, then um, just scale down the size of it, and then it'll um, obviously create a lot less light throughout the scene. So if you've got a fairly boring ceiling, um, as I do at the moment, um, then you might want to go with something, you know, not too much light shining down on it, because that light will shine up pretty well um, on the ceiling. So... Make sure that, um, you know, if the ceiling is ugly, then you use a smaller light source. But anyway, something like that. And you can kind of model in if you wanted to. It's just right here. Let's just add in a cube. Oh, I've got to turn off the clipping again, don't I? So I can scale down the cube and then turn the clipping back on. Yeah. And so these are kind of like the end pieces of the fluorescent tube, I guess. Kind of like that. And then if I just go ahead and select that fluorescent tube there, assign it the white light material, and then I'll go ahead and add in our black plastic material, and then I'll assign it to that little piece at the end there, and I'll duplicate that and place one over there as well. Okay, so now if I was to go ahead and, uh, and give this a render um, right now, just check, did that one, just check that those lights are in the right place. Good, they are. Uh, oh, I only assigned one of those fluorescent tubes. Let's make them both white light. That would help. Okay, excellent. So let's just go ahead now and give that a render and see how that looks. Okay, so that's the finished render there. Um, as you can see, it's looking pretty good. It's, uh, it's a lot better than the plain scene that was there previously. Um, we need to apply some shaders to these pipes here to give them a little bit more detail, a little bit more oomph to them. It's looking pretty boring at the moment. Uh, we also need to apply some proper shaders to uh, all the plastic and the... Yeah, materials and stuff over there um, in the little control panels. And then finally, the bay door at the end there. Then a little bit of compositing, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, so first thing is these pipes here. So these, uh, we're going to be doing essentially the same thing that we did for the, uh, the, uh, the material just before. So we're going to be adding in a glossy shader to get some nice, shiny effects coming from those pipes. Let's just add that in there. And... Um, yeah, just so we can see everything. Let's go into rendered view mode. And we'll drop... Whoa, I added in two glossy shaders. All right, make it a mix shader, like that. Mix it up. Boom. Okay, cool. So now we've got some shiny-looking pipes. Uh, we now want there to be some bump mapping, so add in a mix shader. Take the output of the image texture node, not from the, uh, the diffuse or anything like that. It needs to come straight from the image. Make sure you set the uh, blend type to be multiply. We're going to make that 1.015 like we did for the other one. Turn that top value all the way up to 1. And let's just zoom in on that pipe there and see if we can see the detail in the bump mapping. Yeah, I think I might make it a little bit more. 0 0.02 perhaps. You can kind of mix and match depending on what you've got. 
Um, but that's pretty good, I think. Um, you can also change the amount of, you know, how shiny you want that pipe to be. Essentially, how low you set that roughness to is going to be how sh or how wet the pipe is, I guess. So if you set that to be 0.1, then it's going to look a lot more wet than if it was, you know, something like 0.4 or something like that, which is just like an overall shadiness. Anyway. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and add in that color ramp just like I did before and I'm going to play with the values uh, when I add this in here like so. So I'll turn that, let's make that about there and then this amount that we give it, um, let me just move around, I can get it from a different angle. Yeah, this amount here is then going to become the top value for that glossiness. So you don't want it to be too powerful. So I think something around about that. I'm going to move that light around a little bit closer to it just so that I can see how it affects it from different angles. And there you go. So that's looking pretty realistic, actually. That's not bad. Okay, pretty cool. All right, so um, I actually just noticed before this one up here... This pipe hasn't been UV unwrapped, but since we've got one down here that's already UV unwrapped and it's the exact same pipe, all I'm going to do is just go into edit mode. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm just going to make sure it's not in the way of anything. Move it up there, and that's pretty good. Bring back our little white thing. Let's just make sure that extra pipe there has a nice proper shader to it as well, and it does. Excellent. Okay. Um, Alright, so now moving forward, um, adding in some materials for other objects. So the first one I want to do is I want to create a dark steel material. And this one is going to be a fairly basic one. It's just going to have no textures to it at all. Um, but it's just going to be something that looks a little bit dark and a little bit shiny. And um, it's very easy. Just adding in a diffuse and a glossy shader and then mixing the two together. Just like this. And then for the diffuse, I'm just going to turn that down to be... Yeah, something a little bit darker. And the roughness, uh, I think that should be fine, but I'll make that mix value a little bit higher than usual anyway. And uh, I'll make the uh, the viewport color, I'll make that the same color as the diffuse, just so that you can see which parts have what. And I'll just go into rendered view mode now. And you can see that's got a pretty cool effect. So I'll make this, uh... oh, it's all just blacked out there for a second, what just happened? Okay, that one. So I just made this one have that dark steel material as well, and then I think uh, Blender had a little hissy fit. Okay, there we go. That's fine. Um, okay, now for the pipes that are along the top there, I think um, this one, that's right here, oh, that one. Okay, I'll make that one the dark steel. Let's give that a dark steel one. And then this one, I'm going to make this a... Well, let's just go with... I'll just call it a white pipe. <laughs> Very creative name, I know. And very, very basic. It's Again, it's got no texture to it because, um, you know, it's quite quite a small element for it. If you wanted to make some kind of masterpiece that was to be posted on CG forums or whatever, and you wanted to get an award or whatever, you definitely want to be making sure everything has a special texture. But in our case, we don't really need to bother about that because it's, uh, you know, it's a play scene, <laughs> essentially. Okay, so we've got some white pipe. We've got everything else set up. Okay, now the big one is these materials that we've got right here. So um, in part one, we were smart because we uh, we assigned some placeholder materials. So these ones that are here right now, they've got names like black plastic, red plastic, and chrome, but they don't actually have any shaders to them. You can see they're all just diffuse shaders. The only thing that's changed is they've got a different viewport color so that they, um, yes, yeah, so that we can tell which ones they are in the viewport. But now we're going to apply some materials to them. So the first one is the black plastic material. So the way we're going to do that is exactly what we did just before. We're going to add a glossy shader, and we're going to add in a mix shader. Ugh. I'm trying to go really fast, and then I forget what I'm doing, and then I yeah, get all mixed up. Anyway, something around about that, and this is a black plastic one, so I'm going to turn down that value to be something nice and black looking like that, and then I'll make it look a little bit shiny as well. Uh, now, the red one is exactly the same. So let's go ahead, add in a glossy one. Um, if we did this previously, like if we were doing this on the run and we were creating the materials as we go, then uh, I would just copy the exact same materials, you know, the same layout from the black plastic one. But because we've already set it as like a placeholder image, we now have to go through and make sure that we add everything 
because other objects are now using this exact material, so we can't just you know create a new one or whatever. Um, anyway, you get the kind of picture I'm going for. Something like that. And I've got some chrome as well, so this one is pretty easy. Just add in a glossy shader. This is kind of like a makeshift chrome. It's like really dodgy, but you know it works. Um, so the chrome is going to have an almost mirror reflection like that and then pretty high reflectivity as well just with a white diffuse behind it the green plastic again was exactly the same as what I've been doing before mix shader like so the diffuse is going to be dark green like so okay and then I think everything else oh we've got copper as well alright so the copper one is just going to be, let's go glossy, let's go mix shader, I'll set this to be something glossy like that, this is going to be copper. One thing I learned also is when you've got metal materials, um, the glossy color, we normally never change that, but for metal materials like metallic, me metallic objects like bronze, gold, things like that, they have a, uh, a slight, uh, you know, different specularity color as well. And that's the only time you ever change them is for materials like this. So actually for the actual steel itself, like the main steel material, um, for th things like steel, aluminum and things like that, they have a slight blue tinge to them. Very, very slight, like a light blue color like that. And, uh, and that won't be noticeable, you know, that noticeable, but it will just give it like a hint of realism that otherwise wouldn't be there. And most people won't notice it, but you as the artist will, and you'll know why it looks a little bit better than normal. Um, so there we go. So that's white diffuse. Everything else I think is pretty good and ready to go. So now let's just bring in... Okay, I'll just check everything else is good. Oh, one other thing I was going to do. Okay. So uh, you'll notice on my final image over here, I've got a few things like this right here, this little orange light, this little screen that's lighting up from the side there. And uh, I, I got that idea off that Star Wars trailer that I told you about in the last part. And um, it just helps bring out some uh, an otherwise completely flat looking wall. If you have a little tiny area with a little bit of light in it, it'll just help it just bring out and make it look a little bit cooler. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and model a little screen like I did there. But you can also just grab some little random small object like that. And then you can give it a new material like orange light set it to be emitting, make it completely orange, like so, maybe make it strength 2, viewport color orange, and then go ahead and hit assign. And that little tiny glint will just bring it out, just make it look a little bit cooler than it would normally. So I'm going to do actually another one just up here, orange light. So that little button there is going to be glowing, and that should look a little bit cooler, as I said. Um, and there was one other thing as well I was going to do. Where is it? Just bring back the rest of this scene. You know, I don't know if I can actually think of that one thing that I was going to do. But anyway, I guess I'll figure it out. Let's go ahead and give it a render now and I'll see if I can remember what I was going to do. Ah, okay. I've just remembered what I was going to do. Um, we need to apply a material to the little siren looking light there. Um, so that one is a different material by itself because it's going to be glass. So I'm just going to select this little object here. If you followed the uh, part one that we did yeah, in the last tutorial, um, then actually you won't have this little object right here um, because it was something that I, uh, I just threw in um, for my scene and then I figured, you know what, it looks cool and I want it in, uh, in the new one as well. So I'm just going to call this siren. I think these things are actually just called lights, aren't they? Like the siren is the actual part of the police car that actually makes the loud noise, but I just call it a siren, and I googled it, like siren, and it actually just turned up these pictures as well anyway, so I think most people know them as sirens, even though they're not. That's, I think, the truth. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so this is just a glass shader, like this slight orange material, IOR of 1.2, even though that's not really accurate, but it doesn't matter. Just tweaking things as we go, it's okay. And then I'll make that object there in the background, this kind of spinny thing. I'm going to make that just a solid, shiny mirror. Like so. And then this actual main part of it, that part right there, excluding that and including this. 
all of that. We're going to make that black. Whoops. No! I hate that. All these little things you can't do, even if you just did it. doesn't matter. All right, I'm not going to use this tutorial to, uh, to vent. I do that enough. <clears throat> all right, let's go ahead. Give that another render. See what happens. Okay, so the scene's looking great, um, except for a few things. I actually forgot to assign that orange glass material to the actual object. And uh, this pipe that's down the middle there, I'm going to make that a, uh, a black plastic material. And then, of course, that big glaring white thing at the back there, we're going to now texture that. So um, let's just go back here for just one split second. And I'm just going to apply a material to this object just like that a sign and make sure we've got a viewport so we can see it okay there we go all right now for that pipe down the middle there control l i'm going to make that black plastic just like that i'm not sure if that'll look you know entirely perfect but that'll be all right for now um, we'll have a look at that in the next render anyway. Um, now, for the big one, this is the bay doors right at the back here. So having a look at the finished render here, um, you can see it's got a little bit of extra work to it. So you've got, you know, a standard metal type texture to it. And then you've also got some writing on it. So um, this one takes a little bit of work. We're going to be doing some work in GIMP. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty fun and it's pretty uh, makes a pretty cool result. So the first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and apply uh, a texture to these bay doors, um, as I'm referring to them. So in front view mode, um, well, let's just go ahead to the UV image editor, and in front view mode, I'm going to hit U, then select Project from View Bounds. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and load in a new image, and this image that I'm going to be using is called Image Scratches 2.2. So go ahead and load that in, and that right there is what it looks like. So if I just go, uh, actually let's just apply the material to it right now. Let's just make it image texture, whoops, image texture, and metal scratches, there we go. And let's, if we have a look at it in the rendered viewport mode, you can see that that's what it looks like. And you can see on the right hand side you've got these kind of uh, what looks like door hinges or something. It, it looks pretty cool. It's uh, it's suitable for it, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just leave that in there. Now to uh, to get some um, yeah more depth, variety, fanciness to the uh, to the shader, um, we're going to go ahead now to the node editor, and I'm going to add in a glossy shader with a mix shader, combining the two just like that. I'm going to turn the roughness down to 0.1 just so that it's a, um, a little bit more of a sharper looking reflection coming out of that, and I'm going to make a color ramp node right here just so that I can have a little bit more control over how it affects the uh, that mix shader right there and then I'm going to turn that back a little bit and then turn the whiteness of this down just so that the maximum glossiness isn't too over the top but something like that is pretty good and I also want there to be some bump mapping so I'm going to go ahead load in a mix node take the output of the image texture set that to multiply the top value to be pure white, then load that into the displacement channel. You can see how much displacement we have there right now. So let's just turn this back to something like 0 0.05. And I think that's actually, uh, yeah, it, the bot mapping is actually going in the wrong direction. So I actually want those scrapes that are there at the moment. I want them to be indented. So I'm going to add an invert node and then just drop that in there. And now you can see the bot mapping is, uh, is actually going in the right direction. So that's pretty cool. So um, the next step that we're going to be doing is uh, actually adding in some text and this uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, warning, whatever you call it, warning paint <laughs> along the bottom there. So uh, in order to do this, we need to create a custom texture. So in solid view right now, uh, and then let's load in the UV image editor as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is to go ahead uh, over here in the UV image editor and I'm going to select UV and then select export UV layout. And then over here on the right hand side you can see, oh sorry, the left hand side, you've got the uh, how the uh, the export layout, sorry, how the UV layout is going to be exported. So I'm going to save it as a PNG and I'm going to set this size here to be 2048 by 2048. And I'm going to make the fill opacity for this to be 0.5, just to make it a little bit easier to see. And then go ahead and save it somewhere. I'm going to call this tutorial. All right, it's going to save. There we go. And then go ahead and load up your favorite image manipulation program. My favorite is Photoshop, but I'm going to be using GIMP for this tutorial so that other people can play along. 
Um, so then go ahead and load in the image that you've just created. So I need to find it. Let's just load this in space corridor textures tutorial. All right. So now what we have is this right here. So this UV layout is obviously um, the point of creating that is so you can actually see where the vertices are um, without just creating text aimlessly and hoping that it fits um, when you go ahead and add it to the object. Anyway, so now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and add in some text. So the text that I want to add um, in this instance, I'm just trying to... I'm, I'm still getting used to, uh, to GIMP, so I'm, I'm used to Photoshop, and uh, it's kind of different, so I have to drag this text box. There we go. And, uh, and I'm going to type the words bay like that, and you can see it's absolutely tiny. And I want to change the, uh, the font of that to be ethnocentric, which is a futuristic type font that I got off DaFont, which is a great um, font website. It allows you to test and see things before you... Uh, before you download it's really cool I love it um, anyway there we go bay and then I'm gonna create another one over here uh, let's do that again shall we let's just move that let's drag there we go and then this one I'm gonna make oh and you can see it re always resets the uh, the settings it's really really super annoying I'm not sure why it does that but okay I'm not here to complain all right <laughs> Okay, let's just, uh, yeah, you can, I think I made that. Let's just make that zero. Oh, no. You did it again. you got to be kidding me. You are crazy. Gimp, not a fan. Not a fan of what you do. Gimp. Okay. Okay, all right, there we go. All right, now, uh, another text. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this text. You can see it's reset it again. Uh, let's just drag that down. I could duplicate that, but then I have to change the size and everything. It's just annoying. So uh, I'm going to make another text here, and this one's going to say, um, "What would you? What was this text before? Oh yeah, please stand clear of opening door. It would help if I could see it, but yeah. Anyway, can't have everything. Let's just increase that." Opening door, and then I want this to be on the right side, like that. Uh, stand, maybe just stand clear would be better. Stand clear of opening door. Stretch that out a little bit. There we go. That's good. There's no politeness in the future, so they just say whatever they think. Because that's just how they roll. Oh, this is this is really hard, I tell you. Okay, let. Oh no. Okay. And I gotta turn that down a little bit. <laughs> this is a great tutorial, isn't it? This is me coming to terms with GIMP. No, no, you know it's not. It's not gonna work. It's uh. I'm just gonna have to do. See, I'm kind of move the text. There we go. There we go. All right. And uh, I've just realized the text needs to be white as well. So let's just do that. Okay. Hey, that... No problems. <laughs> All right. Make that white as well. Okay. And then you as well. Okay. All right. Good, good. Uh, and I want to make a... Uh, let's just make this a background color. No, I wanted it to be black. Well, whatever. Um... I want to make the background black, but we can't do that because uh, I can't figure it out. Uh, <laughs> it's not my scene. It's not what I do. Anyway, okay. So for the bottom part, uh, we want to create these kind of warning bar kind of signs painted across the bottom there. Now in Photoshop, you've got the ability to use a, uh, a paint tool, which you can kind of paint that in. Uh, but in GIMP, I, I experimented and I tried it myself and I couldn't figure it out. So, so in lieu of that, um, what we're going to be using is this website called a Stripe Generator, which is what we're using, I used in Photoshop to create the pattern brush anyway. But in this instance, we're just going to do the lazy method. And, uh, and that is, uh, actually, I suppose I should show you what you do. I just set the strip size to be 20 here uh, on both of those. And I chose this pattern of a pattern. I, this website just allows you to create a whole variety of different stripes as you can probably guess um, but a whole bunch of different stripes here you can choose I chose that one with a strip size of 20 you go ahead and refresh it once you've got all the settings that you want and then you go ahead and click on download when you finished but in this instance I'm gonna click open full screen preview and then I'm gonna hit print screen and then I'm just gonna take a screenshot of that entire 
Uh, this is my little Snagit editor that I use right here for screenshots. Then I'm going to control C and then go over to GIMP and then control V that. And then I'm going to move that to where I want that, um, that little warning strip to appear along the bottom there. And then I'm going to take this little magical thing right here. I don't know what you call the box, a rectangular select box, I suppose. And uh, I'm actually going to hit Control I, and then I'm going to hit Delete, and then over here I'm going to select to New Layer, and there we go. Excellent. Okay, now I actually want to merge all of these layers together, so I'm going to hit Merge Down, Merge Down, and then Merge Down. Okay, because that's how you do it. And um, and then I'm going to use the eraser, and I'm actually going to start chopping away at the text to make it look kind of like grungy and like worn down text. So for that, I've got a bunch of brushes here that I actually downloaded from uh, this website, Brush Easy. It's called Adobe Photoshop Grunge 2012. So I downloaded those brushes, and then I put them into the GIMP uh, brush folder, which uh, should be a username, then GIMP.28, uh, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, you go down here and you click on uh, Refresh once you've done that. And then you will have, well, that's not Refresh. No, it's down here. Uh, you click on Refresh. Then you'll have those new brushes there, which you can then start using. So in order to make this work, uh, what I'm going to be doing is, you can see that's really, really tiny. I'm going to turn up the size of it. And there you go. You can see we're going to start chipping away at that using these different brushes here. And uh, it's really effective. It just creates um, some really um, cool looking effects that look quite realistic, um, all things considered. So that's pretty good. It's a little bit slow in, uh, in GIMP, I must add. Um, this one here, let's just move a few of these. This is kind of like some scrape effect that's kind of scraped across the door frame or something. So that's kind of cool, I guess. And uh, this kind of like, it's been chopped away out there. And then this one as well. Maybe I won't use that much of an effect. Maybe I will. <laughs> uh, maybe like that. Anyway, you get the picture. That's pretty cool. I think it works. I think it works quite well. And uh, and that's that's it. We're done now. So go ahead and hide that UV layout layer that's underneath that. So you've now just got this on a completely transparent background. Then you go to File, Export. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as Tutorial 2. And then go ahead and hit Export. Like so. And then go ahead, yeah, hit Export again. All right, so once you've done that, jump back into Blender. And then if we go to the Node Editor over here, I'm going to load in another image texture, this one right here. And then the text that I'm going to load in is the one that we just created, of course, which is called Tutorial 2. And what the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to combine it with our image texture, and I'm going to use it in um, to be placed in this diffuse shader uh, right here. Okay, so... My, my words aren't making much sense, but let's go ahead, add a mix node like that, then drag the output of that image texture to be there just like that. And then because it is a PNG file, what I can do, actually, let's just move this here so you can see what's happening. You can see it looks pretty good as is, but actually it's basing it off this um, opacity. So it's either one or the other. One has to be transparent or you know, you can't have both at 100% trans, um, 100% opacity. So to get around that, I'm going to take the output of the alpha value from that texture, and I'm going to use it in the top input like that. Flip it around if it's the wrong way, and there you go. Now you've got that texture appearing um, exactly the way you want to. Uh, and you can see you've actually got the stripes that are going over the top of the door frame there. So in mine, I didn't have that. I properly, you know stuff and I removed the part where it should be or whatever but you, you get the gist of it you know how it, how it, how it works um, okay so if you actually want that that shine that glossy effect to actually affect the uh, the text that we've created there as well what you can do is apply it to this color ramp here uh, just by adding in another mix shader if we just drop this in and then push this in there let's make this an add node then you can see especially down here you've now got that paint that is now displaying uh, and it's becoming nice and glossy and shady. And uh, it's looking pretty cool. And you can also make that affect the uh, the bump mapping as well if you wanted to apply the two um, by going like that. You can see that's yeah, it's a little bit too over the top, but you can experiment with those settings. I'll just leave it um, with the base 
um, as is at the moment. But that's pretty good. So that is the bay doors in a nutshell. That's how you go ahead and you paint your own and you do all that cool stuff. So I'm just going to apply some basic materials to these objects over here um, very, very easily. Let's make that material. Okay, so they've both got the chrome shader. Good. This one here is going to be black plastic as well as this little makeshift keyboard. And the, uh, the face that's right here, this one right there, this one is going to be the orange light, which is just going to be shining um, at the far end of the bay door just to kind of draw your eyes in even more to it. So let's just do that. Bring in everything else. And before we do a final render, there's one other thing. We're going to do some compositing in just a second, and we want to make the lights so they actually glow. And the way that we're going to separate the lights from the rest of the scene so that we can have it on its own kind of clean render layer um, without actually making a render layer um, is if we select, see this one here that's got orange light, down here in the settings, you've got an option for pass index. So I'm going to make that pass index one. And then I'm going to do the same for the white light, make that pass index one. And then over here underneath the render layers, um, if I can find it, layer, 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 layers. Um, down here where it's got material index, make sure that you check that box and that'll allow that little output in the render, um, in the compositor. And that's gonna allow you to apply effects to just those lights. So you'll see the result once we finish rendering it. So um, I'm gonna apply some um, render samples. I'm gonna make mine 500. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit render now and we'll take a look at it when it's finished and then we'll do some compositing. Okay, so there we go. It's finished rendering and uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, if your render doesn't look up to scratch at this point, then you can go ahead and start changing a few things around. Um, whilst I had the recording paused, I, uh, I adjusted the white light to be 16 and I turned down the bay light to be uh, 14 or something because there wasn't enough light that is actually reaching the walls there. So you can make slight adjustments like that. Now's the time to do it. Um, so now what we're gonna be doing is going into the compositor and adding in some cool final effects. So let me just move this around. I'm going to check use nodes. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to apply um, some glare to those lights. So let's just add in a viewer node. And I'll just check the backdrop. There we go. Um, so in order to, uh, to just highlight those lights there, because we made it a separate material pass and we now have this index MA output, what we can do is to go ahead and add in a, if I can find it, what is it called? What's it called? What's it called? It's an ID mask. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take the output of that index MA and I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to take the output of that out of viewing node, drop that there. And then now if I just set that index to be one, you can see that because we've now moved all those lights to index one, it is now showing just those lights. It's as simple as that. So now what I can do is to go ahead, add in a blur node, and uh, let's take the, uh, the type, make it fast Gaussian, check relative. Let's go for five and five. Uh, no, let's go two and two. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm gonna add in a glare node now as well. Connect those two, just like that. And I'm going to make the threshold to be 0. I'll make the mix value 1. And I'm going to make the streaks 10, like that. I'm going to turn the color modulation up to be 0 0.5, just to get a little bit of color in there. Make the iterations 5 to give it a little bit more detail. And that's it. OK, cool. And now I'm going to add in a mix node. And I'm going to combine this with that blur node effect. Let's set that type to be add. I'm gonna make the blur node into the bottom input like that. And now I can turn down the blur according to how much I want, just like that. I'm gonna duplicate that add node. And now I'm gonna combine both of those effects together with our original scene here. And now you've got some glaring light. Pretty cool. Okay, so there's one more thing um, that we're gonna do. Oh, you can see those little orange lights there. Um, they should probably be on a separate pass possibly because they're orange and now they're shining like a white light instead of orange. Um, or you could actually use, actually, let's just do that. Yeah, I'll add in a mix node here. Mix node, good, good. Let's make this black. No, let's make this black. Let's make this add. And then I'll take the output of um, this. 
Let's just have a look at that. Oh, there we go. Now I've got some color to it. Okay, excellent. All right, let's just take a look at it. All right, so it's a little bit weird in that. No, you know what? I mean, I think... <laughs> I'm not sure why it's doing that, to be honest. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's getting past the scope of this tutorial. I'm sure you can fix that. It's only a tiny little problem with the orange lights. It's okay. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I just jumped over that problem. Uh, I, I could figure it out if I could be bothered, but I can't. It's all right. <laughs> um, the next thing we're going to do is to go ahead and add in some fog so that in the distance, it looks kind of hazy and atmospheric. So the way we do that is to add in, first of all, a map value node. So go to vector, map value. And then we take the output of the Z output like that and then drop it in there. And now I'm going to set the size of this to be 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 perhaps is better. Yeah, maybe 0 0.02. Okay, pretty cool. And then I'm going to turn down the offset because you don't want there to be fog everywhere or else that would look quite fake. I'm going to check use um, minimum and use maximum because sometimes you can get problems if you don't. And I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to add in a mix node like so. I'm going to take the output of that map value node. I'm going to put it into the factor input like that. And uh, and that will allow me if I want to, um, if I change this, uh, this blend type to be add. Now if I turn down this value here of this bottom input, um, then that's now going to affect how much of that fog actually shows through. And you can also change the color of it if you wanted. You could make it like a pink or a you know, hazy blue type of effect or something like that. Um, we're going to do some color correction in a moment. So I'm just going to keep mine white um, like that. <laughs> and um, I think that should be fine. Cool. All right. So next step is the color correction. So, oh, hey, hang on. I've never seen that before. Color correction. No, we don't actually want that. We want the color balance node. So I guess the uh, the proper term for this is color grading. Okay, not color correction, but I'm sure they're pretty much, yeah, hand in hand, whatever. I don't know what the terms are. <clears throat> anyway, um, so we want to make sure that the, uh, so the right, this right hand wheel there, that's the highlights, what color the highlights are. This middle wheel, that is the mid tones. And then this value over here, that is the dark tones. So I want to make the uh, the mid-tones, I want them to be a kind of slightly yellowish color, and then I want the highlights to be a blue color like that. So you basically have to balance out and mix between the two until you get something that you are happy with. So I think something like that should be fine. And if I want to add some more color to that, to the glare of those lights, just to make them a little bit more cooler, I could add in an RGB Kernov in here just after we've applied those those two effects together. And then I can just increase the blue channel, just like that. And that'll give them just a uh, a little bit of a blue kick to them. Just will just make them stand out a little bit more and um, make it look a little bit better, I guess. Um, but there you have it. That is the gist of the tutorial, guys. You can go as far as you want with it. And, um, you know, obviously we, we sped over several things in this tutorial. Um, so... Obviously, if you were to be creating this by yourself, something you want to put in a portfolio, um, you want to be spending a lot more detail, making sure you get you know, extra little texture and making sure all the little bugs are ironed out and making sure everything looks cool and fancy. Um, <laughs> that's the technical term, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, so um, spend as long as you like on it, guys. Um, once you've got the base scene, you can then go in and fill in the details and uh, you can make it look really, really cool. I can already see a few things here I would change. I'd make this pipe here to be less saturated. I'd add in some bevel, make some pipes kind of um, trailing these uh, these door hinges there. Make the ceiling a little bit nicer, make that door frame there a bit darker. A whole bunch of different things you can do. Um, this again here is the finished result, guys. I added in some smoke, by the way. Um, this the smoke you can get on oh, I'm just looking at my Facebook right now there you go you can see what I was doing while it was rendering um, uh, this is from the stock exchange stock.hdu um, you can find some little stock um, free smoke photos then you just take that in Photoshop or GIMP uh, and then you use it as a screen blend type like this um, so you can see that's the smoke there in the background uh, and then this is the smoke here in the foreground um, so you can do a whole bunch of really cool stuff um, once you've got the scene, to just give it a slight little push, make it look a little bit cooler. Um, I didn't bother doing the smoke in Blender because it's a you know it's an image. There's no point, and it looks um, better using uh, an image anyway. 
Um, but that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned a, a few cool new things. And that's all from me. Thank you very much for watching.